I was really fortunate to have kind of a charming childhood. Both my grandparents had a farm, so we were at, at the farms a lot. Every holiday, growing up with camping, hiking, fishing. So we were always outdoors, and so always had my hands in the dirt. I've always loved the smell of dirt, I still do. I was hired in 1996. My position was a project coordinator. Um, my job was to kind of manage the intake of grants and it was, it was all done by hand in those days, you know, reading handwritten proposals. I looked for efficiency and I, I said, this doesn't make any sense. We're making decisions about these projects, but we don't have any real criteria. One of the things I did was kind of really dig in and look at what is it we're trying to do, create some criteria and some guidelines for folks that were applying to make it a little bit easier and make decisions easier. I felt challenged to make a bigger difference. I thought we could do more and, and do things differently. And, and I was really fortunate that, um, you know, the people making the decision, you know, agreed with me and, and were inspired by that. There have been a lot of accomplishments that we've achieved as an organization together. Some of the big wins for us have been large gifts. I think it was back in 2002. Some of the folks at Encana said, how about if we pledge $1.25 million over the next 25 years? Is that a good start for you? That was a really huge thing. I think it was the longest financial commitment on record for like that Imagine, Imagine Canada was aware of. And, and then when uh, and Canada split into Synovus, um, Synovus picked it up and they, they matched it. Our corporate partners have been incredibly generous. And so I think that going from just this annual you know, a partnership contribution to a large-scale multi-year investment in our mandate was, was a big accomplishment and I think it was because we were just able to clearly communicate face-to-face -face that this was the situation. The latest thing I want to talk about is we got together with a bunch of other foundations and, and um, or organizations from across the country and started talking about municipal emissions and we formed a coalition of seven cities called Low Carbon Cities Canada. And this, this took a year of just lots of conversations by phone. And it turned out to be a very significant proposal to the federal government in carbon emissions reduction in cities in Canada. And so that's our last big thing. But it's just the start for us. We've got another big thing coming. <laughs> But my biggest passion right now is my four-year-old's granddaughter. And um, I think a lot about, I know so much more as a, as a woman now that I, that I did when my kids were young. And so she's going to get, you know, the benefit of that. And I think about the future that can look grim, right? And I worry about that. The next steps for Alberta Equitrust are continuing to evolve. Uh, we've just done a really significant program evaluation uh, of our grant program. We've learned so much by um, you know, securing and managing a, a new endowment and being able to be really innovative with um, funding, not just making grants, but investing in private equity projects that are, all, that are returning an investment to us, but also reducing emissions. Carbon is expensive and it's going to get more expensive and so there's a, there's a cost that comes to people who live precariously and we're starting to think a lot more about a multi-solving approach which means if you do one thing five other things will happen. Uh, you know an example might be in a new community you start planting trees along the boulevard. You plant you know one tree it gives you shade. So it changes the biome or the little ecosystem beneath it and other things can grow there. It provides habitat, uh, it beautifies the neighborhood, it makes people feel like they're, they have a little piece of nature in their community and it cleans the air. You know, there's cars driving by and it's purifying the air, putting oxygen out into the community. So one investment, one tree, multiple impacts, so you're, it's a, a multi-solving approach and so we're starting to think what does that look like for an environmental grant maker, what does it look like for the environmental community? 
What's next for me is actually uh, some big changes. Um, I, I'm standing here in front of the Bow River. Um, across the street, down a few blocks, is going to be my new house in uh, a couple of weeks. So I'm moving from the house I raised my kids in, up on Nose Hill, down to the inner city, to a very vibrant neighborhood that's full of people on the street and children. I'm actually going to be living across the street from my granddaughter. <laughs> so I'm so excited. I'm really feeling that I need that, that community energy as I get older. I'd really like to do some governance work as you know my dream would be to sit on a kind of an up-and-coming board and bring that that external perspective that community perspective volunteering I do a lot of volunteering ver like via you know sitting on boards and committees but I would just love to just get my hands dirty and do stuff you know man a table at a community event or something you know and um, yeah just living <laughs>